Shatner Quake by Jeff Burke, Chapter 5 Shatner made it through two more rooms of the museum and then paused to catch his breath by a scale replica of his office from Boston Legal. People stood in a half circle around him, yelling and clapping. What is wrong with you people? Shatner screamed at them. Ah! The crowd parted aside and Hooker came charging. Shatner grabbed an umbrella from the set and stepped aside, swinging it at Hooker's legs. He went face first into the ground. The crowd was joyous. Hooker stood up and faced Shatner. His forehead was cut wide open and thick black ooze leaked from the wound. We could be at this all day, said Hooker, but I'm taking you down. Shatner turned and ran into the next room with Hooker hot on his tail. Directly in front of Shatner was an ambulance that he was carried off in from the twilight zone. He went to dodge around it, but Hooker tackled his legs from behind. Shatner fell forward and his head thunked off the vehicle. The world faded in and out from color to black. Through the haze, Shatner could see Hooker standing over him. Hooker pulled out his police baton and raised it over his head. Shatner sensed his shot back, and he kicked out his leg, hitting Hooker squarely in the balls. He grabbed his crotch and keeled over. The crowd laughed and applauded. Shatner got to his feet. Next to the ambulance, there was a small glass display containing the vehicle's key. Shatner covered his hand with his jacket sleeve and punched through the case. He grabbed out the key and held it in his fist and jutted out from between his index and middle fingers. He turned, and Hooker was already charging, but Tom held high. Shatner stepped forward and slashed with the key. Black goop splattered on the ambulance, and Hooker held his face, screaming. Shatner ran past him to the ambulance, pulled open the driver's side door, and got in. He used the key and turned it on. It roared to life, its engine growling and sounding more like a hot rod than an emergency vehicle from the 1950s. Shatner revved the engine and shifted gears out of park. Hooker then threw himself across the hood of the car, where his right eye was once. Now there was a ruined socket of black sludge. He yelled and coughed up black goop onto the windshield. Shatner screamed and hit the gas. The car shot forward. Hooker held on, coughing and splattering more thick black stuff onto the glass. Shatner could see well enough to guide the ambulance to the museum's doorway. The vehicle plowed through displays, destroying artifacts of Shatner's public and personal life. Shatner put on his seatbelt, held on tight, and watched his life flash by. Kirk and the man in the Starfleet uniform jogged down the hallway. The man's name was Stephen. Not that Kirk had asked. He was very out of shape. He wheezed, and his lungs burned as he tried to keep pace with Kirk. He very desperately wanted to get away, but after seeing what the phaser could do, he did not dare try to escape. Please, Stephen said, grasping his chest. I need a minute. Okay, Kirk said, as he scowled disapprovingly. Stephen fell against the wall and gasped for breath. Kirk paced about in the hall. They were now far enough away from the scene of the murder that no one was concerned about their presence. The convention attendees walked around Kirk and Stephen. Marvelous, said Kirk in amazement as he surveyed the people. A few feet from them was a woman dressed as an Orion slave girl. Her skin was completely painted green and revealing green fabric draped her body. She was talking to a man dressed as a Vulcan. Marvelous, Kirk said again, eyeing the woman. Stephen could swear he saw Kirk's eyes sparkle. Kirk confidently strolled over to her. He stepped in front of the man, leaned against the wall, bracing himself with his elbow. You're wasting your time, Kirk mentioned, motioned with his head to the man. He has no heart, no feelings, not like me. He moved in close to the woman. Hey, buddy, back the fuck off, said the man. He stood a good foot taller than Kirk. What the hell's your problem, said the woman. She began to back away from Kirk. Before she made it far, Kirk grabbed her, he wrapped one arm around her waist, the other around her neck, and pulled her close. We shouldn't fight. There are more enjoyable activities for men and women, said Kirk, as he leaned his face in. Fuck off, freak, yelled the woman, and she struggled to get out of his vice-like grip. The man grabbed Kirk and pulled him off the woman with ease. He spun Kirk around and punched him squarely in the jaw. Kirk crumpled to the ground, dazed as the man and the woman walked off holding hands. Stephen rushed over. He could not help but feel bad. He had been there more than once. He crouched down next to Kirk. Vulcans normally aren't so emotional, said Kirk. As Stephen helped him to his feet, and the woman, Kirk massaged his jaw, they normally like me more. Come on, said Stephen. Let's run down some halls. It'll make you feel better. Natalie walked in the main lobby and froze when she saw the massive arched glass entrance and what was on the other side of it. She stood still and after a moment lit a cigarette, totally disregarding the convention's no smoking in a public places policy. She walked forward and placed her hand on the glass, staring out in disbelief and terror. The sound of a roaring engine shook her out of her trance. She turned and looked back at the lobby. 
It was a massive room, empty, but for a few convention registration tables and a few display cases. She noticed that there was no one working the tables, and there was no one else in the room. The engine became louder. It was coming from ahead of her. On the opposite side of the room was a set of stairs and an escalator that led up to the second floor and the convention's museum. And then she heard screaming, and people suddenly came spilling into view, running and tumbling down the stairs in the escalator. Then the vehicle came speeding into sight. When it hit the stairs and people were trying to get down them, it was ramped into the air. Natalie watched in amazement as the vehicle flew through the room. It soared up and down in a graceful arch. Is that an ambulance? And why is a man hanging off the hood? Were her last two thoughts as it smashed her into the front doors.